you're entering the realm 60 acres. 60 acres was built when the knights were at um, Simmons Bath and they made it with dry stone wall planted um, beach on the top. But if you notice, the minute we come through the gate, it changed. Yeah. It's sheltered, it's a little bit warmer. But this is the ponies love it out here, the deer love it out here, the cattle love it out here, everything loves it out here. But it's just amazing that these big beech trees, the banks of them, but sadly they're all beginning to die now. Just out of old age or something get to them? They do get diseased, yeah. okay. beech beech trees is okay. a fungal attack. Yeah. But some of these must be really old by now. Mustn't they? Yeah. They've got well, three hundred years is about the maximum life span of a beach. That's if it was right. Seventeen hundreds, we planted them in. Yeah, that's you the see, problem we're facing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of them are now dying. But it is, it is amazing. This bit, you, the chap that I had it before, the chap that's got it now, used to um, mow the rushes and use it for bedding. But it's sort of gone back to w nearly what we call rewilding, really, isn't it? In a way, yeah. you know, it's just gone back. And the ponies get in behind it, um, lie down behind it, and it's just like a natural bed, and it's so warm in there. It's untrue. But we'll walk through it, and you'll see. Hopefully, find the ponies. Might be an old deer as well. Even if honey has a foal, yeah. we can't show honey. Good boy. Because, um, well... No, wouldn't be kind to do that to honey, would it? Hello, Nora. I do hope there's a baby in there, Nora. I do too. Are you leaving the way, Tonka? Have you got the age of three? No, Tonka, we haven't. We're very sorry. <laughs> You're a good boy. That's the stallion in front, Greystone Gate mm -hmm. Conker. And here comes Nora. Trey, come and take your you. Hello, Nora. She says the camera's got a longer lens than yours. Is. I'm straight for the camera. Can I talk to your lens? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, Nora. Nora. This this actually belongs to um, Sue Berger, and Hello, she thought it, it needs Nora. to come and do something. So we put it out here, hoping it would have a foal. But it hasn't got round to that yet. But we no. might just show it in the dry mare class at the breed show because it can come back as a companion for. She is Conker. friendly. Very friendly. <laughs> and, so, and so is Petraea. Petraea will probably come up and say hello as well. Petraea is a rare bloodline mare. Okay. And what is that? Like, is a rare Exmoor bloodline? Yeah, rare okay. Exmoor bloodline. Okay. There's very few of her family around. <clears throat> So Katarina and I are here um, in uh, England, in Exmoor, looking at Exmoor ponies. <laughs> the weather is a little less than ideal today, um, but I got some, we got some good footage of them. Uh, I also managed to, let's see if I can do this, my, <clears throat> my boots are apparently no match for the English mud because it is like 10 inches of mud out here. And, but the, uh, the, ponies are amazing and our guides are awesome these beech trees are beautiful and um yeah these po there's about <clears throat> i think five ponies out here we're about to go to another place to see some other ponies to kind of look at them but i want to see if i can um switch this around for a second like i can but okay here here is my shoe you can see that <clears throat> these are 20 year old boots again no match for the english mud and uh i'm gonna have to go shopping later but um Anyway, really cool stuff. They were talking about the breeding in this um, in this particular breed and how they're kept. The Exmoors are a pretty um, popular breed here, really old too. So there's a really cool history here. And um, she was talking a little bit about where we are and called 60 acres. And what's neat about this is there's all these grasses out here and the ponies use them as um, oh, when they're napping too. So anyway, um, we're, going to, we're collecting some behavioral stuff. Uh, we'll probably talk more about it later after we've looked at some of the videos uh, to see what we have seen. But it has been, it's cold and hailing and rainy and snowy. Um, in some ways, uh, it's actually absolutely gorgeous. So, anyway, <laughs> we're gonna go look at some more herds and we'll be back. <clears throat> so I'm here in a stell. Uh, this is a, it's a kind of a, square shaped thing where uh, shepherds come with their sheep and, um, in weather like this where it's 
cold and healing and wet, really wet, and um, and have kind of uh, some shelter from this really nasty weather. But it's cool because the Exmoors are in here too, and this is apparently where they um, hide out. But there's lots of beech trees, and it's um, they're kind of dead. But uh, it's very different weather in here, and there's grass, which is really cool. But it's cold and it's wet. My feet are wet. Don't tell anybody. Um, but anyway, so the Exmoors. I was just told that they were, um, they've been here most of the time where uh, they have pretty stable social herds and um, some really interesting sort of connections with each other over time too. So, yeah. Hey everyone, so yesterday we were um, <laughs> at Exmoor looking at the Exmoor ponies um, and my face was freezing, my feet were freezing, my boots got eaten by the mud. And so I didn't get a chance to talk about everything I wanted to talk about. Um, on the upside, I did get new boots. So um, these ones are proper English walking boots. So they will not get eaten by the mud and are guaranteed waterproof in the snow too. So hopefully we won't have that issue again. <clears throat> anyway, um, the one of the really cool things about what they're doing here is that um, the Exmoor Pony Society <clears throat> is part of this sort of conglomerate of private Exmoor pony owners and they get to put their horses on uh, national land. So there's an agreement between the national land, my understanding of this, there's an agreement between the national, the, the parks and these private landowners and or these private pony owners where they get to graze their ponies on this land and um, it's just a, a really neat kind of cooperative system where the ponies get to live on this beautiful acreage and they are they don't get fed uh, because that's part of how they kind of maintain the ecosystem but they but people go out and check on them every day which is why we got out to go out we got to go out there yesterday is we got to tag along with some of this um, with the people who are going to check on them but there's so it's this kind of cooperative system where it allows the horses to live out on these huge areas and um, helps maintain the ecology of the area and um, it's just a neat kind of interaction between the national park systems and the pony owners but um, I wanted to mention that because it's again it's just one more way of people being able to have horses and um, create a interactive collaborative sustainable system between you know horse ownership and uh land and the national system so anyway um just wanted to mention that um we'll get back to you guys in a few days because we're gonna go uh visit another place where we're giving our training and kind of show a track system because i know that especially people in the u.s aren't as familiar with what track systems are so it's important to show that too anyway thank you for listening see you later